afternoon, everybody. I'm, I'm painfully aware of the fact that I am the last thing standing in between you and beer. So I will uh, <laughs> try not to, I, I will try and break the habit of a lifetime and not hopelessly overrun. Um, but if I do, which um, sadly is almost inevitable, please start throwing things at me. Um, so one quick thing before I start. Um, I am probably more than usually technically challenged today because as ever, I. I punish myself by using, use, insisting on using Linux, and it always means that every time I try and connect my laptop to a projector, something goes horribly wrong. So thankfully, um, I've been able to borrow another Linux laptop from, from Lars, who's very kindly loaned it to me. Um, but uh, it has a, 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 a German keyboard, uh, plus, <laughs> plus, uh, plus, plus it's, not, it's not my usual setup. And I've just, I've just, fortunately, fortunately, all my presentation was, was a GitHub project, so I've just been able to clone it and recompile it. So hopefully everything will be all right. Um, but yes, please, if, if, if things are more than usually fumbly, um, uh, please bear with me. OK, so um, my name is Mark Sabin. Um, as some of you may know, uh, I am uh, yet another precog person as of around June of this year. Um, and I'm going to be talking about my, my ongoing project to um, torture and mutilate the Scala type checker called Shapeless. And um, what I'm going to show you today is some new stuff that we can't do just yet. Um, it is, it is, it is uh, exploiting our, our the new hammer, uh, which is macros, um, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a newer, it's an even newer bit of the new hammer, uh, which is uh, specifically uh, implicit macros and uh, and type macros, uh, which currently only exist in um, the uh, macro paradise fork of uh, Eugene uh, Bumacher's uh, Scala Kepler uh, fork. Uh, which is basically the testing ground for new features in, 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 in Scala macros. In actual fact, there's one crucial feature that I've relied on that actually didn't work until Wednesday of this week, um, because there was a kind of feature I was trying to use. Um, uh, it looked good to me. Uh, everything seemed to be fine, um, except uh, I uh, tried uh, doing something which triggered the, 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 the macro that I, the type macro that I defined. Uh, sorry, the implicit macro that I defined, and uh, was faced with a, a huge and ugly looking stack trace uh, on, the, on the console, ending in a uh, triple question mark not implemented error. Uh, actually, the bit of the implicit macro API that, that I needed to use to get this stuff to work, um, uh, uh, Eugene hadn't quite got around to it, so I sent him a, a, a desperate email saying, hey, Eugene, any chance of you, any chance of you actually implementing this, I could really, I could really do with this before Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I need it for my talk, and um, uh, he was he was he was, he was back uh, within within a couple of hours for a fix, and it was it's it's it's, it's kind of a relatively minor it's, it's sort of just elaborating stuff. But anyway, the big disclaimer is that none of this is available in in, in a, a released Scala compiler whatsoever. Not even 2.10. Uh, it's not even on um, it's not even on on the 2.11 snapshots yet. It's Macro Paradise only. There is absolutely no guarantee that uh, implicit macros. Um, will make their way into into Scala ever, in fact. And I, I, I think possibly one of the things I really want to try and do is, is get enough people interested in implicit macros to, that that there will be uh, a, a, a riot if, if they don't get included in <laughs> in, in Scala in Scala proper. Um, okay, so this this code is is almost entirely um, uh, going to be REPL sessions and 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 code. Um, I have uh, one slide, which is uh, this one. Um, so if anybody is actually interested in just, just cloning that Git, uh, Git repository, if you want to actually have a look at, uh, at code on your own machine while I'm talking, then please do. Uh, otherwise, that's, that's, um, that's useful info for, for, for later. OK, so let's get going. Right, so um, what I'm going to show you, basically, um, is a way of uh, exploiting um, implicit type and implicit macros to make some of the techniques that I've been exploring uh, in Shapeless already uh, just that little bit more uh, useful and tractable. So in a sense, nothing I'm going to show you right now is, is entirely new. Uh, most of the things I'm going to show you today are things which um, have been possible to do uh, in Shapeless using uh, using the kind of the type level programming stuff 
uh, that it's known for, for for quite some time now. But I'm just going to do a very, very quick demonstration of um, some of the uh, some of the infelicities of, 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 of that mechanism. It's it's very nice in the sense that, that, that obviously it cuts with the grain of the type system. We have a nice, interesting, uh, formal theory of how, of, how, of how the various kinds of um, type-level artifacts I'm, I'm, I'm working with uh, interact with each other, how they relate to each other. So that's, that's great. Um, so it's something that we can reason about very, very straightforwardly. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, macros... They're, they're kind of they're sort of the imperative version of type-level programming in a sense. I mean, they're full of loops and go-tos and sort of mutable state, as opposed to the beautiful sort of declarative logic programming style of, of, of type-level programming, which is the way it really should be done. Um, um, but the, the, the flip side is, 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 is the same flip side that, in, in, in a way, perhaps even more so that we're used to, which is that you know, sometimes you pay an abstraction and, and performance cost. So there are, there are, there are ways that you can... You can, you can um, uh, cut corners uh, using using macros that, um, that that make for dramatic improvements. So what I what I've what I've been trying to do and what I've been trying to explore in in, in playing around with implicit macros is, is see if there's some way that we can get the best of work, both worlds. If we can get the if we can get the 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 the, um, the performance benefits of using macros uh, combined with the um, uh, the uh, the, 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 reason, the reasoning kind of benefits that we get from, from, from using uh, more, um, more straightforward, simpler type level programming that, that, that I've been looking at before. So, okay, I'm going to very, very quickly show you the problem, or at least one of the problems. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate this in the context of type level, uh, type level arithmetic. Type level, or type level arithmetic uh, kind of may seem a little bit obscure and abstruse and perhaps not incredibly useful, but there are things that you can do with it um, which I think are quite useful. Um, and in a sense, this is one of the poster children of, of the dependently typed programming revolu revolution, the idea of having um, uh, vectors or collection types which have their size statically encoded in their type. Um, so this is, this is already present in Shapeless. This works on Scala 292, um, uh, but it's clunky, and we'll see in a second just how clunky it is. Um, so let's, let's do a couple of quick imports. Uh, so, um, so let's try and import. Lost underscore again. I've got it. There it is. <laughs> well, the problem with that is that then the, uh, the key, it doesn't correspond to the to the uh, to the code. Anyway, I've, I've tried that already. It doesn't help. It's worse. It's actually it's actually worse. Um, uh, right, okay. <laughs> Sorry? Have I missed something? No? <laughs> um, so, um, so, uh, so um, Shapeless has, has type level natural numbers. These, these are encoded as um, a sort of piano numeral. So it's, it's, we start with zero. Uh, we have, we have, we have, as well as, as, uh, as a type level form, we, we, we also have a... Um, uh, a value level form as well. Um, so this is this is this is the, the value level form of of the natural number zero, uh, and you can see its type is um, uh, shapeless uh, shapeless dot nat underscore zero, and its value is is some sort of anonymous value of of, of the nat type. Um, so we can continue on with with these underscore prefixed. Uh, 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 natural number values uh, up to I think I go up to 22 for some obscure reason I can't imagine exactly. Sorry, yes? Would you mind resizing the window up slightly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, I can, what, I, what I think I can do is probably this. Does that help? Periodically. I will do that and hopefully, uh, yeah, every time it sort of drops below the level of the chairs, please somebody shout and I'll, I'll, try, and, I'll try and head back to the top. Okay. So, um, so, um, we have this slightly clunky encoding of uh, clunky encoding of, of natural numbers here. Um, they have to be explicitly defined. They're defined in terms of well, zero zero is, a, is, is just our initial value of of of, of our nat type. But then everything else is encoded as uh, successor of successor of successor of. So this is nested type constructors, um, and then a corresponding value level uh, representatives of those things. So if we actually look at uh, value one, you can see that it's successor of nat zero. We look at value two, uh, successor of successor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I think. Well, it's successor of, of, of nat one, which is um, 
So Nat one is is successor of, of Nat zero. So it's 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 a kind of a recursive piano uh, arithmetic uh, kind of definition of natural numbers. Okay. So um, um, so these these are just sort of type level and value level. Uh, correlates of, of natural numbers. Can we actually do anything useful with them? Well, the answer that I, I, I have already answered, uh, sorry, that I've already given, uh, is, is that yes, we can. We can use implicit resolution to effectively do, uh, do, do proofs in simple arithmetic. Sorry, proofs, uh, arithmetic. I, there's something must be wrong. The compiler is doing math. That's not allowed, is it? Um, um, okay, so let's, let's see if we can ask the compiler uh, to do some, where's Y? <laughs> um, uh, yes, got it. Oh, not quite. Almost got it. No. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Left. Yes. No. This one. Yes, got it. Okay. Cool. Um, Okay, so we can do. We can ask the compiler to prove for us um, that um, three plus five is eight. It's an incredibly complex proof, um, like so. So here we are using. Uh, is that a comma? It is a comma. So three, five, eight. Whoops, wrong number of, oh yes, indeed, thank you. So nice when people use your code and they actually know it better than you do, that's great. Okay, so, um, so what's happened here is that uh, on the basis of a whole bunch of implicit uh, definitions, actually recursively defined implicit definitions, um, there, there is available a, um, uh, an implicit witness for the fact that three and five makes eight. If we were to try it with a different value, like so, um, that's not going to work. There isn't, there isn't a corresponding implicit value here. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details as to exactly what the implementation of this is, but if you, anyone who's kind of familiar with the, sort of the, the, the recursive definition of addition in piano arithmetic will probably get some idea that what we're doing is we're kind of like recursing down one value and kind of like counting up another. And, and the first thing that should immediately hit you in terms of at least compile time, um, addition is going to be, what, O-N in the size of... Right, okay. Now, <laughs> now the, the, the next thing is, of course, is once we've got addition, we probably want to have uh, multiplication as well. So let's try multiplying three by four. And that, whoops, underscore four. Uh, underscore, underscore four. Um, and that should be underscore 12. Oops, sorry. Yay, cool. Okay, so that works as well. Now, um, the definition of um, uh, uh, multiplication in, in piano arithmetic is kind of doubly recursive. Um, so this is basically O n squared in the size of... <laughs> <laughs> right, so aside from the fact that it's quite soon we're going to run out of explicit numerals, I mean, we could keep on going by just applying the, the successor type constructor as, as long as we like, until we get bored. But this is, this is very, very, very irritating. Um, ideally, we would prefer to have a rather terser and more natural form of expression. Aside from the fact we're going to run out of numerals quite soon, we also have a little bit of a problem um, if... Um, well, let's see, what can we do here? Let's just, um, I'm actually wondering, oh, okay, well, if I, if, I, if, I use the, if I use the prod type class instead, um, that actually hides away the result type, so let's just check that this, I should have tested this before I came on, yeah, that's, that's fine, okay. So what, was the, what this is saying is that it can find, it's not actually going to tell us, I don't think, in this context, what the product is, but it's, it's, it, it has at least produced a witness for that. So let's let's just try multiplying. Um, well, let's let's do keep keep doing squares and see how long we can go before smoke starts coming out of the back of the laptop. So that's seven by seven. I think it's kind of noticeably getting a little bit slower with each one. Um, yes, I think it is, isn't it? Definitely. Well, let's, let's, let's go a bit faster. Let's try. Yes. Okay. So, 
A bit further. Let's try 20 squared. I actually think this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is quite good. I can remember some, someone else um, was experimenting with tight level encodings of natural numbers, and I, th I, think, I think their implementation only got up to you know, eight, 8 squared or something like that. So I think the fact that I could actually do 40, well, 20 squared in, this is, must be a pretty good laptop, this. <laughs> Okay, so this is, this is I've, run out, I've now run out of integer literals after this one, and that's as far as it goes. But as you can see, basically, compile times in this kind of setting, they, they just blow out horrendously. So it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of not very practical um, for, 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 for real uses. Um, okay, so we've got two problems that we've seen. Um, and uh, one of them is clunky literals. The other one is... Um, um, uh, is, is, is just horrible, horrible compile times for, for any kind of non-trivial uh, type level arithmetic. Um, so, what I'm going to show you now is um, some nifty things I've been able to do with, with a combination of, um, um, of type macros and implicit macros, which will fix both of these problems. So, um, the first thing I want to do before I do that is I just want to very briefly um, uh, introduce singleton types. Um, Sorry, I'm being gestured at that I'm, I'm, I'm not close enough to the microphone. So singleton types. Can I have a quick show of hands? Who here is familiar with singleton types in Scala? That's a pretty good proportion, actually. That's great. Um, OK, so singleton types are um, basically types which have precisely one inhabitant. So rather than being, say, the type integer, which contains all of the integers, you might have the singleton type of one, uh, which contains precisely and only um, the, the, the integer 1. So it will be a type error, for example, to ascribe the type, uh, the singleton type of 1 to the value 2. Um, so Scala actually uh, has singleton types. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have them, uh, well, it, do, it does have them across the board. It has them with respect to all types. All types have uh, corresponding singleton types. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have syntax to express them with respect to uh, to literal values. So there, 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 there's no way... The Scala type checker represents internally um, uh, singleton types for integers, but you, you just can't, you can't, you can't just express that in Scala surface syntax. Um, um, but basically, that's the, they, they are going to be very, very useful for us, um, and we're going to use those to, to replace our, our piano numerals. I just want to do one very, 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 very quick um, illustration of what, what a singleton type will do for you. So let's, let's do something like uh, val foo is oops, equals is. Uh, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll do it with a string, but for, for this is, I'm kind of cheating a little bit with this. Um, so if I now do val bar is of type uh, foo dot type. So this is the singleton type of, of uh, value foo. Crucially, it's not actually the singleton type of the literal string foo. Um, oops, it might help if I assign something to it. So that compiles, but if I were to try to uh, assign some other string like that, that doesn't compile anymore. So you can see, you can see the expected type here um, is um, is, is the singleton type of foo, so foo.type, uh, and what it's actually found is, 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 is a string uh, bar. Interestingly enough, the compiler is actually mentioning um, a singleton type of strings here. So this, this type string, and then open brackets, uh, quotes bar, close bracket, is actually the type that the compiler really does know that that string literal does have under the hood, um, but it won't let you write that in any way. I mean, what you would really like to be able to do is, is something like um, foo.type. Type. So this is this is this is this is not allowed, uh, other than in um, an experimental branch of Scala C um, that uh, Paul Phillips put together, uh, inspired by Jeffrey Washburn, um, which is great stuff. I would love to I would love to see this this in, in in the Scala language proper. But again, this is this is something else which isn't there. However, however, we can use type macros to rectify this terrible omission. So let's. <laughs> 
because, okay, so a type macro, if you've, I mean, most of the uses that, that, that people talk about for, for type macros are things like type providers. So the idea is, is basically, uh, you've got a type macro is, is, is like, a, a, like, a, like an ordinary def macro, except that it, it, it can occur in locations where you would normally expect a, a type to be. Um, but type macros can also be parameterized. They can be parameterized with types, but they can also be parameterized with values. And the normal reason for doing that would be, would, well, at least perhaps the most common reason I think most people are thinking of is that you might parameterize a type provider with a, with a, with a, with a file path or a URL or something, um, so, or, or some set of connection details for a database so that the type macro can go scurrying off to the file system or a URL or a database to extract some kind of schema information to synthesize, uh, synthesize a type on the fly. Um, but we're not restricted to doing that. We can, we can, we can instead um, use um, type macros to do other things. So let's let's just bring some of this stuff into scope. Um, uh, let's have a look. Um, in what in what follows, all of the s prefixes that you're going to see here are short for. Um, Really? Uh, that's worrying. Did I check out the wrong branch? Crap. Uh, yeah, good point. Can I? Tab. Does it? Why do you think? Well, this is the machine. This is a different machine. <laughs> because I couldn't get my machine to talk to the. Ah, right, okay, cool. So uh, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Um, what have I forgotten? <coughs> oh, uh, shapeless examples. That's Tab completion is not working for me. Why is this not working? Uh, damn. So much. What's that? Okay, I have got a problem. Oh, what? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, onward. Um. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay, right. So um, I've brought into scope. Um, so the, the, the S prefixes and everything you're going to see here are, are, are short for singleton because I'm, I'm playing around with singleton types. Um, so I, we're, we're going to have a, um, a natural number type which is based on integer singleton types. But before we get onto that, I'm just going to show you something which is a sort of a useful piece of, of the puzzle, namely a way of um, cheating the Scala compiler into, into allowing us to work directly with singleton types for integers and also Booleans as well. So um, here we are going to have a, uh, let's call it three. Um, it's going to be of type uh, s int, uh, short for singleton int of three. And this is a type, remember, but you know, you'll notice that it's parameterized with a literal value with an integer value, and that is going to be assigned as three. If, on the other hand, we were to try and do this, oops, type error. And notice the, the interesting form that the Scala compiler gives us the, um, uh, the type mismatch back as. The requirement is int three, and again, I, there's no magic here. I haven't done anything to produce that, that particular error message. That is the internal um, uh, Scala compiler representation of the singleton type of the integer three. Um, what it found instead, though, was 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 um, the singleton uh, integer four. Okay, so what's going on here? How how have we managed um, uh, to do that? Well, uh, very little magic at all, really. There is there is a time. I'll, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show some code uh, a, a little bit later on uh, if if there's time, and if not, we can look at it later. Um, what we have is a type macro, um, and the um, uh, the basically the Scala type tracker itself is going to is going to enable um, the uh, sorry I beg your pardon there is there is an implicit conversion from uh, from vanilla non singleton integers um, uh, with the restriction that 
they are represented as, as uh, integer literals. So this is this is this is this is so the target is a type macro representing the um, uh, the singleton type of the integer three. The conversion from the value three to of which is of type plain vanilla int to um, the uh, singleton type three is done via an implicit conversion, uh, which is able to inspect the tree representing the arguments to the implicit conversion, see that that is of type um, literal constant three, and then turn that into a um, uh, in, into a singleton type which uses uh, constant three as as as, uh, um, as, as its component, um, and that that just maps directly into Scala's type system. So. Um, we have a first-class representation here of, um, uh, of uh, integer singletons. We can, do, we can do this with bools as well, which will be useful a little bit later. Um, so bool of true is... Uh, oh, good, good point. Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, well, this is, that's true <laughs> rather than three. And similarly, false. Again, time mismatch. Um, OK, so that's in some bulls. Um, we've got our implicit conversion between, between um, uh, the, the non-singleton values and the singleton values. Um, so the next thing that uh, we want to see is, so the, initially when I start, Great. Okay. So um, initially, when I started playing around with this, I, I was actually very hopeful that I, I would actually be able to just work with singleton types. Um, there is a problem with that, though, and the problem is that um, the Scala compiler is is um, very eager to widen singleton types to non-singleton types. So you you can you can start off by um, um, uh, by um, working with a with a. I, I'll I'll do a quick demo to show you that. Suppose I had def foo of oops. Uh, unfortunately, quick demos are getting right. Foo of t. Uh, close it. Um, t. Oh. Right. So this is this is this is an identity function. So let's let's apply it to. Whoops. So foo of three you would hope would be, oops, yeah, you see what's happened here is we've lost the singleton typing. Um, so even, even though that the, the explicit type of foot, whoops, uh, three rather, let's move that up again. Uh, even though the explicit type, well, in fact, he's lost it even there. So basically, basically singleton types, singleton types basically evaporate very, very quickly. They, they, they exist very, very transiently. Um, so we need, we need some mechanism for, for keeping these things hanging around. Um, so singleton types will evaluate when they're, the, if you like, the top level, the outermost type um, of a value. But if they're actually embedded, if they're wrapped in a type constructor, so if we're, we're, we're kind of doing boxing here at the, at the type level, if we, if, we, if, we <laughs> if, we, if we wrap our singleton type in another type constructor, um, we, will, we will end up with something which, um, which, which hangs around a little bit longer. And when, once we've got something which hangs around a little bit longer, we can do something useful with it. So, let's, so what we have is, uh, is a, um, a snat type, a singleton nat type, um, which is basically the type level boxing of uh, an integer value. So let's let's see what we can do with that. So let's have val three. Uh, this time is going to be of uh, type uh, snat of. So this is our box at the type level. Whoops. Uh, our box, and we'll use the singleton integer types because we need. To, obviously, this is this is this is a, this is a type level thing, so we can't mention um, uh, values here unless unless we use the 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 um, the type macro that we've we've already prepared earlier. Um, so, okay, uh, equals three. Okay. Right, so what's happened here is that, um, so this time round, um, uh, we have um, a, a different implicit conversion. So this implicit conversion is taking a, um, uh, an integer literal 3 onto a value of type um, snat of the singleton type of 3. So 
this is this is good. this is going to hang around for longer. So this 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 value three, um, you can see that we've, we've we've still got it. We can we we could pass it through that identity function, uh, and and we'll get back out what we put into it. So that's fine. So we've got something now which is sticky. Um, so I guess I guess before I before I before I move on to the next bit, I just want to observe that we've actually solved part one of the problem. Uh, we now actually have. Um, because we have a way of, of, of lifting integer literals to the type level, um, automatically via implicit conversions, we, we can now start expressing uh, APIs in terms of, uh, in terms of integer literals in, in situations where we might otherwise encode um, an index uh, via a type level literal. So there's a whole bunch of places in Shapeless um, where that's done. So for example, in, uh, in, in H lists, um, there, is a, there is an indexing um, uh, method to, to pull out the nth the nth element of, of an H list. Um, this obviously has to be to, to keep the typing lined up. Uh, this obviously has to be a, an index which is which is statically known at, uh, at compile time. So, consequently, the the, the, the shapeless API is is uh, is defined in terms of type level type level natural numbers. Um, using this technique, we'll be able to just replace that and just use integer literals for indexing. So that, that's that's kind of nice to start with. Um, so we kind of solved a bit of the problem. The other bit of the problem is, is we're not restricted to, to 22 anymore. Um, we can um, uh, we can let's let's do something else. Uh, let's have 33. Why? <laughs> Hurrah! So we're no longer limited to our limited fixed budget of uh, identifiers that that um, uh, that we had uh, defined uh, before. Um, okay. So um, as I'm Rapidly running out of time, I'm going to I'm going to get to the punchline, which is I'm going to multiply some numbers that are bigger than 22 together. <laughs> <laughs> so remember how long it took last time. So uh, let's I'm just doing another import. So we have uh, corresponding to the uh, to the to the, the previous sum that we had. Uh, there is a singleton sum. So let's just let's just bring that into scope. Um, Lost it. There it is. Right now, this is this is set up slightly differently. Um, you're gonna this is this this is gonna look exactly like a um, a value level thing. But in actual fact, what's happening is under the hood is that we are going to be inferring. So let's I'll just do the the three plus five thing uh, again. Um, so this looks like whoops. Oh yes. And I'll, I'll, move, I'll move it up again so that people can see. Okay, so this um, so this looks like a value level um, uh, operation, but what's actually happening is that those those uh, literal values arguments are actually being used via the implicit macro to drive type inference to infer the type level natural numbers. So that we're inferring the singleton int type three and the singleton int type five from those integer literals using, using the implicit macro. Um, that is then being f fed into the process of implicitly result. So the, the, the sum uh, method has a, a, an implicit argument of type sum ABC. So we've got, we've got the first two values of, those, of that type. We, so we've got three and five. And then it's, uh, the, the implicit macro is then uh, summoning uh, well, it, it's, it's kind of short-circuiting the piano recursive arithmetic solution, directly extracting three and five, doing sum, and stuffing in a representative of this singleton type of int in the process of implicit resolution. So it's kind of completely short-circuited all of, all of, all of the, the, the complex infrastructure that's, that's all, albeit very straight, you know, piano arithmetic is, 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 is a wonder to behold, but it's just not terribly efficient. This, on the other hand... <laughs> This, on the other hand, is okay. So that's 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 addition. So I'll just I'll just do, I'll just do a big multiplication just to prove that this is really working. So let's just import um, s prod. Okay. Um, so let's just do product of big number. Okay. This is this is huge, isn't it? This is this is. <laughs> Who needs big data when you can multiply 1024 by 1024? Yes! Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've ever been applauded for multiplying two four-digit <laughs> integers. 
Okay, right, sort of uh, joking aside, so can we actually do some use? I, I have a very, very short amount of time left, so I'm, gonna, I'm very, very quickly going to show you something interesting. So let's have um, two lists. Uh, one is going to be, oh, come on, of length three. So one, two, three. So again, this is, this is stuff which exists in Shapeless uh, already using the, the, the piano arithmetic encoding. So L2, so these are ordinary Scala lists, uh, four, five. So what we're now going to do is we're going to project this into, into so we're, we're going to basically wrap these values uh, in a, a type which statically encodes their size. Um, so we, we do have to do um, a, a little bit of, of, if you like, runtime jiggery pokery, at least initially just to bootstrap us into this, because the compiler doesn't know anything about these. It just knows the lists. But once we've established that they are lists of a given size, then we can work with that. So let's, let's first have uh, sized list one. So that is going to be uh, L1 uh, sized. And now we have to say explicitly what the size is. Uh, Z, 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 Z. Size, I may have to import something else, actually. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, yes. Import. Z, Z. Come on. Right, OK, quick. Control L. Right. Okay. So what we what we get back from this is a, a is a is a, a list type which has been stamped. Um, can I just finish? I have to just show this example. I'll be as quick as I possibly can. Okay. So um, it's 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 a, it's a list which has been stamped with its static size. Um, it, we get back an option because obviously it might not actually be of that size. So in this case, it is of length three. So we get back a, we get back some of that list. You'll notice crucially, and this is the difference between this and and um, uh, non macro shape. This is we, again we can use an integer literal here. Let's let's just get that because we know it's there. Let's do the same thing with um, with the, uh, the second list. So list two, which was of length two. Right, so you can see we've got, first we've got a list of uh, length three, a list of length two, again encoded in the type. Now what happens if we do this plus, <laughs> where is it? Ah, there, shift, no, control, no, just plus. No, where is it? I can't find it. Where is it? Help. Ah, there. Fantastic. OK, so length yes. is five. Fantastic. OK. I'm the, the man with the, uh, the uh, walking stick has dragged me off stage. <laughs> Thank you.